But the big headlines today in politics came in response to reports that Arya Derry is planning to introduce a bill with coalition support that would completely ban non-orthodox, egalitarian, mixed-gender prayers anywhere in the area of the Western Wall and even prescribe criminal penalties, even jail time, for those who violate both that rule and also who wear clothing deemed immodest for the Jerusalem religious shrine. Now, the outcry to that news was so heated that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released this comment this afternoon. I heard the headlines about the Western Wall this morning, and I want to reassure and clarify the status quo at the Western Wall that is dear to all people of Israel will be maintained as it is today. I also spoke with my friends, the leaders of the factions, and it has been accepted by all that the law will not be raised. And even if it is, it will not include criminal articles about restricting clothing or musical instruments which were written 40 years ago and are not acceptable to anyone. And so the Western Wall will remain exactly as it is today. Well, joining us now is Linda Avitan. She's a board member of the group Women of the Wall, which has campaigned for egalitarian prayer to be allowed uh, in the Western Wall area, or a plaza, I should say, for many decades now. She joins us this evening from Rehovah. Linda, first I want to just get your reaction to the news that uh, apparently a sizable part of the coalition wants to introduce a bill that would actually sentence, I guess, women like you to six months in prison if you would continue to do what you've been trying to do for decades. Well, unfortunately, we're not we're not shocked, but we're we're very uh, upset about it. Um, we could see the writing on the wall every month when we go to pray on Rosh Chodesh. We have demonstrators, men, women, girls, and boys who are organized by the religious establishments. They bring them on buses to yell, scream, throw items at us. And then they call us the, prov the prov provocateurs, that all we want to do is go and pray at the Western Wall in a women's minion. So the violence has been escalating for quite a while, and now they have a chance to legalize their, their violence and, and, and ban us from, from praying. Right. Now, I want us to sort of clarify or pause Prime Minister Netanyahu's comments, because he said he would not allow the criminalization of that kind of behavior, and the bill is going to be delayed. But he did not rule out that at some point a version of this bill would move forward without the criminal penalties, which would not only ban prayers, egalitarian prayers in the Western Wall Plaza or on the other side of the, the former Western Wall that your group has advocated for, but even that, that area to the south of the Western Wall that is used, for example, by a lot of uh, American or North American Jewish families from abroad for bar and, mitzvah events. Uh, and, uh, and more and more Israelis are discovering how nice it is to pray in a mixed mixed gender prayer. We have no we have no um, reason to tell the Orthodox that they're doing the wrong thing. And we ask them not to tell us that we're doing the wrong thing. Every Jewish person in every community should be able to pray the way they see fit. And we've been doing this for 34 years every month, every month except Rosh, uh, Rosh Chodesh that comes on Shabbat or on uh, Rosh Hashanah. So it's not like we get up in the morning and say how we can uh, annoy people today. This is how we want to celebrate Rosh Chodesh in a women's minion, in a women's um, prayer quorum. And uh, they see us as a huge threat. Look look how threatening we are. Can you see in the screen how threatening okay, we so are? Okay, so I am, I lend in, the, in the journalistic fairness, I have to put forward the argument made by those who are introducing the bill that say uh, you're provocateurs, there's a way that prayer has been done for thousands of years in Jewish history. This is a holy site. If you want to pray in your own uh, synagogues, form synagogues, go ahead. But that this particular area is a sacred site and should be kept, maintained along Orthodox lines. Lines. How, how do you respond? Well, you know, in, in 2016, a bill, a bill, government decision was was made after three and a half years of negotiations because they realized that we everybody needs a space, and the southern um, part of the Western Wall was designated for that space, but nobody carried out the other parts of, of renovating it and making it accessible and visible and accessible to people that can't walk down 50 steps, etc. And um, so we stayed where we are. So it's not true that prayer has not changed. Prayer has always been changed, slowly but surely. And 
the way that we pray is is well known in in other in Israel as well and in all over the world. So right. Linda, fun, we don't I, have the monopoly on on how to pray and what to wear. Brief, brief, brief answer. I just have to ask you: If you're facing six months, in, uh, the possibility of six months in prison, thousands of shekels and fines, would you go ahead? You and your uh... that's a tough decision. I, I might just have to. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like when I, the suffragette said. Face the same the same discrimination and the same struggles a hundred years ago, and and I can't believe we're in the same spot, but in a different issue. So I might just have to. All we right. have to like take this take this to the end of the of the line. To the end of the line, Linda Avitan. End from... of the line. The end of the line and the end of the line. <laughs> right, uh, Linda yeah. Avitan, Women at the Wall. Thank you for joining us on i24 News. <clears throat> thank you.